Splate has one more important built-in kind of data, which is called syntax. Suppose I want to represent, but not evaluate, the expression 1 plus 2. If I hit return now, of course I get a 3, but if I put single quotes around it, then I get just 1 plus 2 back. So far that looks like a string, but I will get 1 plus 2 back just like that, even if I add more space to the input. That is, a syntax object is not just a string recording the characters, it's parsing some amount of the expressionness uh, of that term and then uh, normalizing it for me. So I could uh, put a lot more zeros in front of my 1 and 2. I could use the uh, two-line form where I put start with plus a little bit of indented, and it just normalizes it to 1 plus 2. Now this 1 plus 2 looks like a splayed expression, and that's kind of the point, but it's not necessarily a splayed expression. Like I might choose to make plus mean something different. Or if I say 1 plus 2, uh, 3 times, 1 plus 3 times 4, for example, um, if I put parentheses, those parentheses are going to be preserved because the parentheses are not necessarily redundant, right? I might choose to make times mean something different when I'm interpreting this syntax as my own kind of language. So let's suppose I have the syntax 1 plus 2 and I want to interpret it in some different ways. Somehow I need to be able to inspect or pull out the pieces of that. And to do that, there is a variant of match, the same match that we've seen before, but it matches syntax patterns, where I use dollar signs to escape. So I can match 1 plus 2 to the pattern uh, dollar sign n plus dollar sign m. The n will match up with the 1, and the m will match up with the 2. And I'll just put n and m together in a list here. So when I run this, what we see is a list containing the syntax object 1 and the syntax object 2. Again, that's because this n stands for the thing in the pattern, which was matched up to 1 plus 2 in this case. If I didn't have the plus there, then match would say um, there's no there's no matching case and particular expected more terms in here to, to possibly line up with that. But when it does match up, then I get these syntax objects. Now, quote one, uh, the syntax object that has one inside of it, uh, there's a number in there, but it's not a number yet, right? I couldn't add it to two if I wanted to. That would be a mismatch between syntax versus integers. But there is a function, syntax to integer, that will let us extract out the integer part of a syntax object. And I can use that on both of these numbers. Now I will get back the list containing the number 1 and the number 2. It's really a number I could add 100 to it if I, if I wanted to at first. Okay. So syntax integer works because n here matched up with 1. If I put app1 banana here, then I'm going to get an error from syntax to integer because apple uh, isn't a number. I could instead use syntax to symbol for both of these pieces now, and I would get the symbols apple and banana. And this finally helps explain why we have both symbols and strings, because we might need to represent a program that has the identifiers apple and banana added, as opposed to uh, the identifier apple and the string banana. And in this case, the uh, unpacking is going to fail because banana is not a symbol, right? It doesn't represent an identifier in the program. I could use isSymbol to check whether something is a symbol. So in this case, we'll get true and false because apple is a symbol and banana is, a, is not. It's a string. Of course, I can use syntax as string here to get the string out. So this doesn't quite explain how we're going to use syntax objects yet uh, as we write interpreters, but hopefully it gives you some idea that it's about representing pieces of a program that are not necessarily splate programs that we get to decide how to pull apart and interpret in the end. And so we need to be able to convert between these syntax objects, numbers, symbols, strings, and so on.